Hey, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back. Um, you guys might still see us in our white attires because we decided mm -hmm. to dedicate baby today. Mm -hmm. Zaria Grace Prosper. Mm -hmm. So we took your advice, you know, some persons told it doesn't matter when. Um, so we decided, you know, to go ahead and do it now. Um, my parents are here, you know, visiting. So we decided to just take advantage yeah. of all, all the grandparents yeah. being here all in one place and it was it was a beautiful, it was beautiful amazing. Yeah. and the church was there and it was it was amazing so we decided just to you know just to share with you guys we decided not to single out you know godparents, godparents. not to have particular yeah. godparents but um we decided that um you know it takes a community to raise a child and we decided that the entire church would be godparents so when pastor asked for you know the godparents to stand we asked the entire church to stand isn't that kind of like contradictory like we don't believe in godparents we ask everybody to stand as godparents and the thing is when you have one or two the one or two that you have they don't really fulfill yeah. the role but you have a whole lot to fall back on if those one or two you know they don't play mm -hmm. their part so it it makes everybody feels involved in raising yeah. their child. I think I think a better word to use instead of godparents is like mentors and guardians. Because I don't want people to feel like, oh, it's baby's birthday, everybody has to buy a gift. No, I want to, as baby's growing up. Raise, so you help to yeah, raise. Yeah, help to raise her, to, yeah. to impart wisdom, knowledge, spirituality, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. That, that to me, means a lot more when it says it takes a community to raise a child. Yes. So guys, as the year is coming to a close, we just want to share a few of the lessons that we learned this year. It was a rather interesting year and it was fulfilling in many ways. You know, mm -hmm. there were ups, there were downs, there were losses, there were wins. But one thing that we've learned is gratitude. Yeah, so number six, What's... number six on our list, is gratitude will always win mm -hmm. so like i said it was quite a, a roller coaster year it was an interesting year but i chose to use the word fulfilling to describe this year because i chose to focus on the positives you know we had like i said before we had wins we had losses sometimes there were more losses than wins but we god taught us in this season to focus on the things that are most important and uh, you know it just allowed us to be content in every situation and to just focus on god and try to see god in everything and that really changed our perspective when we think about it at the end of the day that we decided to focus on what we have focus on what's most important and then it just helped us to develop this attitude of gratitude in every situation even when the losses came we were like god i still thank you because it could have been worse but you know we still have life we still have bread we still have food on our table and we thank you and it it, it takes a lot to like paul said you know he's learned to be content with just very very little mm -hmm. and he's know what it's like to be to have a lot and to still be content so it's just a matter of just seeing and when you have this attitude of gratitude you live life better mm -hmm. you're always more content you're never searching for the next thing yeah you're happy exactly mm -hmm. where you are mm -hmm. in the chapter that you are and that's something that mm -hmm. i think really i needed to understand this year you know that there's nothing wrong with being in the chapter that you are in the time that you are and that's just what god wants to teach us actually this point rolls into our next point which talks about comparison being very deadly point number five um understand that be grateful for the position that you're in and the season that and it's season because it's very easy to compare and to say you know i'm not where this person is or mm -hmm. i'm not where i should have been in comparison to that person Shimin and I had a baby this year. We didn't build a house. We didn't buy a yacht. We didn't travel to space. But there are people who did all of these things. Mm -hmm. And we have to learn to be content. And then the thing is, one thing that I've learned from this comparison is deadly is success looks different to different persons, to everyone. So, you know, persons may deem success as the accumulation of wealth, of accolades, and the success to somebody may just may just be, you know, to, to you come know, home to your family. Exactly. Success may just be okay. I can afford to buy one meal today. I can afford, you know, to sleep in my bed tonight. I can have, you know, success is different and no matter the 
season and the point of life that you are in do not compare your season to another season because you don't when we see persons are flourishing in their season we don't know what dry season they went through That's or true. we don't know how they got what they got what That's they have true. in the That's season true. my mother was just a minute so in your season appreciate it your win will come and sometimes we try to focus on the big wins you know sometimes it's important to focus on the small wins i made it through today and i did not get upset with anybody i made it through today i accomplished at least two things on my on my task I for the day you know so you just have to at the end of the day don't compare yourself with others because you you're kind of doing yourself an injustice when you compare yourself with other people because you're trying to extend yourself and be like other people everybody is different everybody's race would be different everybody's path would be different and some people's paths are straight and easy while other person's paths are winding and bumpy and everything like that but remember that success one looks different to everyone and two it takes time some may make it faster than others so when we just left school you know we spent seven years in cuba and we the friends that we you know we had in high school and college they some of them were already working for four or five years they had already gotten married they already accumulated house and land and then we felt like we were so behind and we needed to catch up and we had to remind ourselves breaks 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 they they too took time to get where they are now yeah. we just take longer because we spent longer in school oh, yeah. you know and we will not have as much money and then you cannot try to live up to their level as well because they have accumulated so much wealth that they can probably live a you know an excessive life or do more or but even so we may never even get to their level that is true success mm -hmm. because they're married for four or five years yes. they have a household and they have no kids the first thing we do is we get, we have a baby mm -hmm. and instantly it's like oh no we're, we can't no success is different for different people mm -hmm. enjoy the journey while you can yes be grateful in every single season that you're in mm -hmm. point number, number three. three don't be afraid to go against the norm mm -hmm. so as we go on my experience i'm sure you have an experience to talk about with pregnancy so for me when the year began 2023 um, i had made the decision after internship to not enter directly into medicine but to take some time to go teach and let me tell you guys it was a very tough decision friends were discouraging me family members tried to discourage me a lot of people in my circles tried to discourage me be like oh you know you're leaving medicine to go after teaching and the money every it's like a lot of the people i saw or that i sought counsel from they only saw dollar signs. They never saw the state of my mental health. And there were some people who really pushed me and encouraged me and told me, whenever you're ready to move to the other chapter, you can do it. But for now, do what it is that you feel called and pulled to do. And yeah. I absolutely enjoyed teaching. Mm -hmm. It was an amazing experience with the other teachers and even with the students. I taught at an all boys school, for those who don't know, um, video attached above. Um, but it was just an amazing experience and if i had listened to what people told me i would never have done it and i would have found myself just being stuck in a position so sometimes you're on the edge of a major decision and people are speaking into your ears um don't be afraid to go against the norm because sometimes that's where you find beauty on the other end so then the other thing is um in my in terms of my experience you know i'm i'm at this point battling with um staying home being a stay-at-home mom you know at least for a certain amount of time as opposed to going directly back into the workforce mm -hmm. and we know we're living in the the era of the the career driven woman the i the, the i mom, woman. right the modern woman i'm was the i mom i mom i can do everything hmm. Right, that I can do everything mom right and then for me you know having my little baby girl as he has changed my perspective on life for me now my energy is just to raise this child the best that I can because she's a gift from God 
and I want to raise her the best in the best way possible. And I just see that if I have to go back into the world of work now, what time am I going to spend with her? You know, you're working in the ER where you, you work at least three, four days a week. On the ward, it's every day. And then you do your 24-hour calls at least once or twice a week. So she's going to be spend more time with the nanny or the caretaker more than she does with me. And it, it, it should not be. That, I don't think that's the way that God intended for family to be. You know, when we get home, we're tired and we're, sometimes we're frustrated. And we give our family the little quest that's left. I like you use that word quest and that's not good enough you know family the, the the institution of family is important and you have to put energy and put time and effort into it and balancing for me this is my personal balancing work and balancing your career and family i don't know how other women do it but even in medicine it's difficult yeah. i have not yet started but i look at the lives of other mothers and how you know their time spent with their children you know it suffers at time that that quality time suffers and I want to give Azzy the best of me. I want Azzy to get the best version of me. I don't think that she will get the best version of me while me working in the hospital, you know, a, a eight to eight job basically right so that is where i am at you know i'm struggling with making that decision should i stay at home for a while to raise my daughter or rush back into the workforce am i going to give the workforce the best of me and then my my azzy the the little the little bit that's left no my family my husband my child they deserve the best of me you know i want to take care of them take care of my home spend quality time with them but we'll see how it goes with pray. But no matter what, whatever you decide to do in 2024, God willing, don't be afraid to go against them. Against the norm, okay? yes. <laughs> oh. So number two on our list kind of, you know, reverberates everything that we've been seeing before. Prioritize your mental health. Do what works best for you. You know, sometimes you have to make the tough decisions and say no. So then it's hard to say no to prioritize us because, you know, everybody wants a piece of us peace at church peace at work peace grandmother yeah you know no i think home should get the best okay. of you but i'm just saying we're well, just dream. talking that everyone has a everyone wants a piece yes everybody else instead of stretching yourself that's not fair and everything just these pieces don't need as much you you, you focus you you focusing on those that need you more that makes sense right and sometimes it's like i said making these tough decisions of closing doors of walking mm -hmm. away you know doing something that is unconventional like rashad left medicine for a certain time to prioritize his mental health because he wanted to spend more time you know with his family and for me that is a big you know example of prioritizing your mental health if it means leaving the job if it means means breaking off the friendship if it means relationship if it means leaving the apartment because the, the the neighbors are driving you crazy prioritize your, prioritize mental, your mental health, health. And even further than that, sometimes, you know, we go through our lives so mundane. If it means instead of going from work to home, you take a little detour, you stop by the beach for five mm. minutes. If it means buying that cheesecake that you always wanted to buy, it may be a little bit expensive, but yeah. something that you've always wanted that's going to make you happy, something that makes you laugh, something that's just different. Just take the time. It's not something you do every day, but prioritize that for yourself. Yeah. Guys, we've been working hard for 2023 and I'm sure those of you who are here it's been a long year mm -hmm. so don't be afraid to put yourself first don't be afraid to be a little selfish mm -hmm. every once in a while say this thing is for me yeah mm -hmm. and our most important point number one and that thing is just top point for the year number one is to seek wise counsel mm -hmm. a lot of the things that we have gone through throughout the year and a lot of the things that we have experienced we have had people around us who have been able to guide us correctly. We've had people that we could just ask questions, mm -hmm. seek advice, even parenting. I will say it again. I would love to thank the CCs for just, mm -hmm. just always being that listening air and always just sharing advice on marriage, parenthood, just being full-time doctors. And I, I have no idea how they did it. Yeah. But it's amazing to know that they're Christian, they love God, and they love their family. And it's just amazing to have wise counsel. And then the thing is, sometimes 
we don't want people to know what's going on in our life true sometimes we feel like we should do it alone or this journey is from not all journeys for you alone sometimes god is trying to get your attention and trying to steer you in that direction you know seek counsel from that person from this person you know sometimes you just have to take that leap of faith and open up to somebody who has gone traveled the road before you somebody who can give you that advice that you need for that particular time and it's very important not to travel the journey not to journey. alone not to travel the journey alone that does make sense travel the journey not to take the journey not to, to embark oh. not to embark on that journey alone. alone because sometimes you don't know what to do like True. during my pregnancy um at certain points i didn't know how to process some of the feelings that i was having i didn't know what to do in certain situations and i just had to excuse me be open with persons around me and this is how i'm feeling is that a thought that i'm having how what do i do how did you do it when you know you are going through it and because i was able to open up to these persons they were able to give me such practical and such helpful advice i'd like to also thank katharina for that she was just like she mm -hmm. mean what you're going through a lot of it is normal mm -hmm. but a lot of women they just don't have a place to and when i started noticing that when they were bouncing ideas off each other it started becoming more palatable like you started understanding it a little better mm -hmm. like the not being able to sleep and then the the feelings the emotions and it's just amazing mm -hmm. to have people it's also important to have people who will tell you the truth mm -hmm. not just mm -hmm. those who support the idea that yeah. you're thinking so a lot of the times we want to make a decision and in seeking counsel we only stick to people who are going to continue to put us in that direction mm -hmm. sometimes wise counsel is people telling you that's a terrible decision you know there have been people this year who have had a rough year and then they've turned to different places for advice some people even yeah. turn to us for advice and the best advice that we could have always given to those people turn to god at the same time let's try to examine everything from a wider perspective and it's not about choosing one side or the other. It's just about giving advice based on the Bible. Mm -hmm. But guys, what a year it has been. It has been. So as we come to the end of 2023, I just want to wish you guys an amazing, amazing end of year. May God continue to bless you and your families. And above all else, guys, put God, God first. first. And also we want to wish you guys a blessed and prosperous 2024. Remember that we can do nothing without God. As you enter the new year, take some time, you know, to sit with God, to sit quietly and ask, you know, God, what is it that you want from me this year? We need to do sometimes a retrospection, see the areas where we, we failed in 2023 and see where we can do better in this new year. Is it your time with God? You know, is it your love for other people? Is it your, the way you, you you uh, manage your money is it your time you know it's important to sit down and reflect as you begin another year mm -hmm. and not just reflect but also put it into action you know and everybody say that we make new year resolution and so on it's okay to make the resolution but you have to try to follow through you know follow through with them if you need any help any advice feel free to message feel free to call we are here for you guys. Drop it in the comment section right there. 2024, God willing, will be a reading year for us. We've actually got um, Dangerous Jesus, which is Kiwi's new book. I'm excited to read it. She means that I'm reading it before me, so I'm back in the phone between it. But thank you guys so much and have a blessed and wonderful day. Bye bye. Okay.